Hey there, hey, it's Aaliyah Janae and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be about something that the Lord gave me a few years ago and recently came back up. I encourage you before we get started to go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so that you can be notified of any upcoming videos that I have in the future. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. <laughs> So I am a child care provider. I work for an after school care program and I see a lot, a lot of the time. Um, the kids often um, make me think. There's a lot of teachable moments. Um, but this particular day that I'm going to talk about today um, is about this little girl. She um, is our youngest little girl and um she's so sweet and so polite and so well behaved when she's by herself um and she's still well behaved amongst the other kids for the most part but this one day this one day went a little a little left and that's partly because a lot of times in social settings the youngest individual um amongst kids usually often tries to seek the attention of the adult present um, whether that be the teacher or the parent or what have you and they often also take on the characteristics of the older children but that aside in seeking the attention it's usually um for the sake of proving to the other children that they are the most cared for or the most loved. Um, not like the middle child syndrome where they seek attention because they need attention because they rarely get attention. Um, but it's like this, oh, I'm cute, I'm adorable. So the teacher loves me more. And so they often will do things to get that attention or they may do the wrong thing to prove that they won't get in as much trouble as the other kids or they may cry more um so that they can be coddled and so that the other kids can see oh you know I'm the loved one not speaking from experience or anything <laughs> but um that's what was going on this day this little girl was on a thousand okay she was just doing all of the things all of the things that you could think of she was doing all of them and she was working my nerves greatly but I was trying to be patient because patience is a virtue um, on this particular day she was you know acting a plum fool and my boss who you could say is like the Dean the principal she's looked at like that by the children um, she had enough and she told the little girl you know you need to apologize you need to apologize to your mom and you need to apologize to Miss Aaliyah for cutting up and she was very calm about it she wasn't yelling she wasn't um, telling the little girl that she was in trouble um, the little girl didn't get a whooping she didn't get a timeout like it was a real chill like you know just apologize and this little girl bursts into tears I mean she is in shambles she is distraught okay she is broken because she was told that she needs to apologize and so my boss stopped her and was like hey why are you crying like there's no reason to cry you didn't get hit you didn't get punished all you have to do is apologize but this little girl was just she was just broken and it took her a long time to get to the place of just apologizing and the Lord spoke to me the next day about the situation and what he said was, your tears are not equivalent to your repentance. I was like, wait, wait, what? wait, what? And <laughs> I heard it again, but this time it was, it was that your tears may show a broken heart but they don't stand in the place of repentance. And I was really like, oh, yo, I do that. I, I do that. And the thing was that the little girl, she wanted to be able to get away with us believing that her tears 
was a display of how sorry she was. But really, in actuality, the tears was evidence of how embarrassed she was. Embarrassed that she got in trouble, not that she did it. You know, upset that she was in trouble, not upset with what she did to get there. And I realized that I did that a lot. A whole lot. I mean, I would break down. You know, I would go to the altar. I would break down on the altar. I would just be crying and crying and crying. <sighs> but I wasn't really repentant. I felt shame. I felt embarrassed. I felt broken. But I wasn't really willing to change my behavior you know I was upset because like dang I got caught or dang this got out of hand this went further than I anticipated but I wasn't really repentant I was just crying and that's where a lot of those surface level prayers come through you know like you're about to get in a car accident and you're like Jesus if you just save my life I'll do thus and so or you know <laughs> you're in the hospital because you drank too much and you're getting your stomach pumped but lord if you just if you save my life I'll never drink again no I'm gonna well like you probably will drink again but you also want to live um or lord if I am not pregnant or for guys if she's not pregnant <laughs> I will never have sex again I'm not saying everybody's prayed that prayer. Because everybody has not prayed that prayer. But some people have prayed that prayer. <laughs> and the thing is that that's, that's not really repentant. It's just like, oops, I didn't mean to get here. I didn't mean to get in trouble, right? The little girl's like, you know, I just wanted attention. I didn't, I didn't want to get in trouble. You know, I just, I just wanted to be coddled. I didn't, I didn't mean for it to get to this point. Like, what? So, when the Lord gave me that revelation, if you will, um, he let me know that a lot of the prayers that I was praying were a whole lot of stipulated prayers um, and a heart full of embarrassment, but not a whole lot of remorse or repentance. And he literally said, like, stop crying and make a decision. And I, like, you know, like, that, you don't want to hear that. That sucks. Um, but I did. I had to stop crying and decide what I was going to do. I had to stop crying and stop being hopeful that God was going to console me in my mess. I mean, he's a gracious God. He's a loving God. So, you know, he's going to be there. But I, that shouldn't be what I was banking on, right? That shouldn't be what we bank on. And I had to come to understand that my tears, if not backed with legitimate repentance, if not backed with legitimate change, didn't count. They were just tears. It was just an emotional moment. And they were just tears. And that was that. That was it. Nothing else, nothing deeper, nothing more in depth nothing grand um they were just tears and the reason why it came back up because it literally happened like maybe two three years ago um but the reason why it came back up was um because i got to see my godson a few days ago and he was crying about something he wasn't in trouble but he was crying because he wanted something and you know i talked to him really briefly and he i said you know what's wrong he told me what's wrong and i said is that a reason to cry and he said, no. And he literally stopped crying and had a great day the rest of the day with no tears, with no fussing, no fighting. And it came back up through that because I realized that like everything isn't a crying moment. Everything isn't cry worthy. Some things are just a matter of like deciding to be okay. Deciding that, yeah, I don't really like that, but it could be worse. Or deciding that, yeah, I screwed up and I'm going to stop screwing up. <laughs> um, so, 
yeah, that's just what I wanted to talk about. Um, I don't know if anybody else has been through this or has done this or has realized like, man, I really just cried a whole lot and then went right back into doing what I was doing. Like, um, I just, I'm just speaking for myself. I know I have, and I know it's happened in the Bible. So I would assume that it's happened in life for other people. Um, but yeah, I hope this encourages somebody um, in some way to just like, hey, say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna just make a change instead of crying about it. Um, I'm just going to decide to repent for real because um, it definitely encouraged me um, to just be honest with where I was and, you know, f fix it or give it to Jesus and let him fix it. Um, so, yeah, that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and click that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and click that thumbs up. Comment down below if um, this helped you at all or if I said something that maybe you hadn't heard before or hadn't thought of. Um, yeah, let me know. I love you and Jesus loves you so much more. And remember, you will never overcome that which is hidden and you will not conquer what you refuse to confront. Let's break some chains, y'all.